Dr. Chuck the Science Schmuck. Synchronize. Well, as you can see, I'm wearing my arts and crafts suit, which means I'll be doing arts and crafts. I got this here sewing machine. Now, this may seem a little weird. So, oh, why, has, why does a 41-year-old man have a sewing machine? Uh, interestingly, if you're not American, this may not make sense to you, but when I was young, in school, sewing machine use was compulsory. So, all American men know how to operate a sewing machine. Just, we were extensively trained to use sewing machines. I'm not 100% sure why, but everybody knows how to use them. Even though, like, I do not know another person that owns one. They're not even that expensive. A sewing machine is like $50 at Walmart. And this one's even a brother, which is um, two big brands of sewing machines that are for normal people. Like, if you're a professional, you're, you're in another league. But for schlubs and schmucks, specifically schmucks, I'm a schmuck, not a schlub. Those guys are weirdos. Um, brother and singer. This is a brother machine. Brother. So, what am I doing? Well, I discovered an instance where I require the use of a rabbit. The problem is, I'm terrified of rabbits. I don't like them. They're terrifying creatures. Have you ever seen a rabbit? They're horrifying beasts, beastly monsters. They're like this big, and they're covered in hair, and they've got these giant red eyes that just stare at you. Like, blankly, like, I'm going to murder everyone in this room. I don't like touching them. I don't like handling them. <laughs> they terrify me. I've seen what they can do to people. It's in Monty Python. That was an excellent documentary, so I don't trust rabbits anymore. So, I need to sew myself a synthetic safe rabbit. That's difficult because I don't actually know how to sew things that aren't pillows. Firstly, what's this water for? The material I'll be using is this. It's canvas drop cloth, which is also what my craft suit is made out of. It's one of the more common substances I use. Now, if you've watched this channel forever, which you haven't, nobody watches this channel. Um, if you are familiar with canvas, it is incredibly flammable. So, uh, do take note of that fact. Fire out. So, that's why usually I treat it with borax. In this case, we're not using borax because I don't want the fabric to be excessively stiff. Nobody likes to be excessively stiff. Or maybe you do. I don't know. I don't know you. I may know you. In fact, I probably know a lot of you. Oh, considering that this may relate to work, because we... It, it, hopefully no one from my job is actually watching this. I don't think they will, because only one or two of them know I have a YouTube channel, and nobody actually knows what my real name is. So, I've cut canvas cloth from this drop cloth. You don't need to see me sitting complaining, uh, you know, there's a, a head. But, what's the first part of a rabbit that you need to rabbit? The first part of the rabbit is the most important part of the rabbit, which is, of course, the ears. Which I don't like how they have big ears, it's unnatural. But regardless, I've cut these strips. So the way that these strips will need to be connected is two strips together, of the same size, so up, around a little bit, because rabbit ears are not as pointy as you would think. I'm kind of surprised people don't cut rabbit ears like Doberman ears, but then again, that's already cruel in Dobermans, so don't do that to dogs, and don't do that to cats, don't do that to sheep, don't do that to rabbits. And I never was a huge fan of the cropped ear thing. I know it's like an ancient German tradition, but it's super weird. And they look so much cuter when they don't have ridiculous ears. Not to say they don't look cute with the ears, it's not their choice. Dogs I'm kind of okay with. They mostly hate me. Horses hate me. Rabbits hate me. The only animal that actually likes me is goats, and goats like me a lot, and I don't know why. Regardless, I'm getting off track. Um... So if you don't know how to use a sewing machine, this may be a little confusing, but what a sewing machine essentially is, I don't know why I should go through this, but a sewing machine has two parts that it uses to sew. It's not like sewing with your hands. One part is the bobbin. It's not metal. It's a plastic thing with thread in there, which is like a little tiny spool, which sits below the needle. Uh, how you load your bobbin is dependent on your machine. On top, you have your spool. 
your spool connects around the machine through the needle. So uh, normal knitting, normal sewing needles, and they're not knitting needles, knitting needles are terrifying in their own right. Normal needles have um, the loop in the back so that you can poke, move around. I can also sew by hand, not great, but I can do it because it's universally trained in America. Everyone knows how to sew. I guess it's because we're descended from pioneer people who just sewed a lot. Regardless, the sewing needle actually has the loop on the tip so that it drives through like this. Uh, you have a, a knob that can control that on most machines or a switch. But don't get your finger in there. There should never be an instance where you get your finger in there. It will sew your finger because it's, it's driving the bobbin thread and the spool thread through. Um, just don't stick your finger where the needle goes. It's not hard. It's like using a gun. Don't get in the bullet's way. Don't get in the needle's way. Interestingly, I use guns and sewing machines, which again, American, that's super common. Like, there's nobody here who doesn't have sewing machines. Well, most people don't have sewing machines. Switch on the side, comes with a little light, powered by a foot pedal. I get resonance on my table, which is probably a bad thing. I'm going too fast, that's the problem. Uh, this episode will be interesting to edit. Uh, going around the edge of the ear is a little tough because it's got a curve and I'm not great at curving. So, I mean, there's entire legions of YouTubers who do sewing, and I am not the sh sewing schmuck. My PhD in schmuckery is in schmuckery, not in sewing. I just can do it to an extent enough to do basic things. Except it was going to be terrible to edit, is what I'm saying. Because I don't think you want to just sit here and listen to me sewing. It's boring. It's still connected to the machine. That's why I constantly have these... Ooh, they're wet. Why are they wet? Why do I ask that question like 17 times a day? Why is it wet? Everything's wet. Okay. Now, if the ear worked appropriately, I should be able to turn it inside out. Ta-da! An ear. It was a massive pain to try to get this ear unclogged. It's a very long ear. Hopefully relatively stiff. I guess not. It need, requires needle nose pliers. Everyone should own needle nose pliers. Don't care who you are. At the very least, you could stab someone with them. Don't stab someone with them, I'm joking. It would be very blunt and ineffective. Alright, next ear. Okay, this side's going to be the bottom. Got the pedal. Steel-toed boots while wearing the pedal actually makes it a lot easier than bare feet. Also, the ground is covered in broken glass because I was trying to cook glass. Apparently, if you heat it up, it turns melty. Maybe I'll cover that in another video. I need to get a map gas torch, though. And there we go. Two years of time it took me to get these unfurled. They're ears. Rabbit ears. A uh, bit asymmetrical, but it doesn't really matter. About the same size. That's nice. That doesn't usually happen to me. Um, they are not as poofy as I'd like. Okay. I think I've come up with the thought that I'm going to put a little bit of stuffing in them. Just to keep them relatively stiff. I've got my big bag of stuffing that I've had for years. I've gotten all the cockroaches out of it, which is nice. Uh, it's smelly, it's polyfoam, sort of hair thread, I and mean, it's ordinary stuffing that you would see. Now I had a, uh, a poker. Uh -huh. It's actually a homemade arrow for, or a bolt for a crossbow. Uh, so who doesn't have a crossbow these days? Actually that's another thing that's weirdly common, it's like people just have crossbows here. I did not fully appreciate that, but now I'm like, wait a second, everybody's got a crossbow. Everybody's got a sewing machine and a crossbow? Like, where, where have I been living? The answer is a hole in the ground. And that may sound like a joke, but look where I am. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea about the ears is, uh, I don't know if you ever looked at rabbit ears too closely. They usually stand up. Yes, there are rabbits that have floppy ears, but the rabbit that this is attempting to simulate is a type of rabbit that has standing up ears. It's the terrifying demon rabbits. All rabbits are terrifying demon rabbits. I keep stealing my zuckanese. 
I'm actually joking. Rabbits never took the Zuccanese. The Slugs did. Um, which is not a problem because it turns out, although I'm good at growing Zuccanese, I really don't like them. It's one of those weird things about gardening, which we'll get into gardening once it's not sub-zero outside. But, uh, yes, I sow and I have a garden. Because I'm like 90. I'm actually 41, so halfway to 90. But, but the point is, I'm good at growing some plants and bad at growing ones I actually eat. But there is not a Mountain Dew tree. Well, that you know of. Uh, this is one stuffed ear. That looks a little bit disturbing if you have a mind like mine, which is to say the mind of a schmuck. It just poked me in the eye, and what I was just thinking that makes it so much worse. Oh well, it's not the first time I've been poked in an eye like that. But. Uh, you need to sew the end closed in this instance. This will make more sense later, but it will help to have that sealed so that the stuffing of the ear does not move into the stuffing of the body when we get to the body. And then once we're done with the bodies, we'll let them hit the floor. You may ask why am I using black thread? Because I only have thread in black and white and it's hard to tell the difference. Black and white are basically the same color. Okay, I've got two ears that are slightly floppy, but very rabbit-like. They'll connect in the middle like this. That looks very rabbit-like. See, I'm a bunny. A uh, bunny! Now I can feel my way around in darkness to find the blood of the innocent. Um, next stage is the body. I've already cut it, because again, uh, watching me cut fabric is super boring. I've cut Heads, rabbits have a head shape roughly like this, uh, except it's full of a lot more very sharp spiny teeth and a long proboscis, which they use to enter your aorta and seek your heart so that they can bring as much blood as possible. I've also got bodies. Again, I have not yet let them hit the floor because the floor is very dirty and covered in broken glass. Um, it'll dissolve eventually, I'm sure. Okay, so the head sticks to the body like this. Could I have cut it in one piece? Yes, but I'm trying to get a good head-body joint, which is also known as the neck. Uh, rabbits don't actually have those in real life, but I wanted to simulate one. And to the question that I'm sure you're asking, yes, I have seen a rabbit. Uh, for a second before I turned away and ran. They have these weird luminescent red eyes. Um, this would be a job where you would could use pins. Eh, frankly, pins are probably better. I've got these nice colorful opalescent pins. I have to try not to eat them. I'm going to put a pin in it. Also, how you make a nice grenade. You put a pin in it. Well, if you want the grenade to be very nice, you have to take the pin out. But supposedly, according to the training manuals, once you pull the pin out, Mr. Grenade is no longer your friend. Oof. My pin got caught in the, uh, forward thrust head. So, one important thing to note, that I just did wrong, I just had to undo it. Uh, I don't know how much of that gets cut. I had sewn the head on like this, which is logical. But you have to remember when you're sewing something like a rabbit, the seams can't be visible. What's that weird buzzing sound? I don't know, probably the bees. But the head, if it goes on like this, the seam will be visible on either side. The head has to go on backward, like this. That way when it gets turned around, the seam is really only visible from this side, but not this side. This seam will also, I believe, be double stitched, which means I'm gonna go over it twice because the last thing you want is for the head to detach from the body. That happens a lot in humans, uh, especially if you don't wear a seatbelt, which is why we double stitch your head right back on for the funeral. Nobody wants that falling off. Nothing came out. Hold on a second. Hold on a second, I've got to, this, this happens to me a lot. I have to resend my thread because it 
pulls itself and breaks. Should probably be using, um, what is the word? Stronger. I was going to say denser, but I don't really need denser thread. I just need stronger thread. I think I do have a, a tiny spool of it, but it's for uh, repairing these pants. It's the same color as the thread, because uh, I always break seams, and it's helpful to be able to re-sew a seam. Uh, with jeans, it's not easy, because the seams are, when they break, they tear the fabric. Now, as you can see, it's not 100% because there's overlap, but I'm not a professional here. So, the head is attached, sort of. We'll clear this up when we get to it. I mean, what is this, rocket surgery? I am neither a surgeon nor a rocket scientist. I do not have a MD in schmuckery, which would be a schmuck doctor. I have a PhD in schmuckery, which is a Dr. Schmuck. But you know that already if you drink vinegar. It's complicated. I don't really do constitutional law because I'm not a lawyer. I, uh, all those signs for no lawyering. Okay, so I got the heads on. I've got these buttons. Sewing buttons is one of my favorite things. Interestingly, historically, buttons were made of bone, metal, or milk. Yes, it's true. If you combine casein from milk with formaldehyde, it produces an, a primitive plastic-like substance that's very durable. I can't do... It's a fly! Get away, get away, get away! Uh, I can't actually do that because it's hard to get formaldehyde. I mean, back in the 1800s, like, everybody was rolling in formaldehyde. Alright, so, how do you sew a button? The idea is to attach them somewhere on the head. Rabbits, if you've ever seen a rabbit, they are super freaky looking. They have a very narrow bridge on their massive nose, and the eyes are on the sides like a frog. Uh, so you don't want to have it up in the front. Like that is not what a rabbit looks like. The eye is sort of the top of the head in the back. You know, like right about there, probably will, you know, as long as you do it symmetrically on both sides, it won't look too derpy. Uh, you're gonna want to get a sewing needle so many. Which one do I want? They have different purposes, but I never learned that much. Although they did teach me sewing, they didn't teach me the specifics of like hardcore sewing, like the kind of sewing you need a thimble for. Despite that I own a thimble, it's mostly for drinking very concentrated vodka out of. So that looks like a good needle. Uh, always be sure to put them back. Nobody likes used needles all over the place. I'm going to just grab my spool. Um, it'd be nice to have a pin cushion. That's not very soft. Interestingly, it does melt slightly, but it's not soft. So, how do you use um, sewing manually is different from sewing with a machine. That you take your thread, and then, I mean, yes, I do that. I like the taste. Tastes like thread. It reminds me of being young, back when I had hair. I do have hair, but it's migrating. That's something that happens once you get to your 40s. It starts, well, by the time you get to your 30s, it starts leaving your head and going other places. Unless you're one of those weirdos who just doesn't age. One of those people who don't have hair at all to be alopecia, which I hear is psychologically pretty tough on people when they're young. Although, I grew up watching Kids Next Door, so I would have probably considered it super cool, because you look like number one. And there you go. Notice the, the thread has gone through and then tied in the back and cut. So that's actually two strands of thread attached to the needle. Um, I would not recommend using this to sew human flesh. That's all I have to say on that subject. Uh, and then to do an eye, a button type eye, you go through the holes. Careful not to hit your finger. Come out the other side. That didn't work. Uh, so you're just going to have, it's just going through the holes over and over again. 
in a pattern. So uh, you can just jump cut past this. I'm just going to be sewing buttons is one of my favorite things to do. So I'm just going to enjoy myself for a while. So yeah, one thing I didn't note before I started, uh, do make sure it's on the outside of the rabbit. If the eyes are on the inside, it doesn't help. Uh, once you're done, uh, you're either out of thread or your buttons finished sewing. I do, um, buttons have four holes, so I go between all the holes in a square and then across in an X. When you're done, you uh, tie it off by going through the back side. Make sure your needle is correctly on the back side. Tie yourself a knot, and then I usually double knot that just to be sure. You don't want the eyes to come out. That's something I've definitely learned. That's why I usually wear eye protection. I'm not wearing it for sewing because, frankly, if, if you're sewing and you need eye protection, you're doing it wrong. So, that's still a good length of thread. Let me retie that, and I can reuse that again. Get rid of that nubbin on the end, and there you go. It's ready for the next eye. But what do we have? The button is now sewn. That looks nice. It doesn't look very rabbit-like yet. Uh, it's taller than it should be because the rabbit will fold in the middle, so I made it taller so that when it gets fat, it'll get wide. Hopefully. Now, I'm not the greatest at multidimensional stuffed animals, so this isn't going to be perfect. But we'll see. You're going to have to cut through this again because I'm just buttoning my way to victory. Woo! All right. Again, needles go back where they came from. Like, seriously, always keep your needles well organized because uh, you do not want to step on one of these guys without a shoe. It'll go right through your foot. Which is why I always find it weird that some people wear shoes outside and not inside. Like, the shoes are dirty. They're, they're not, my floor is literally covered in dirt. There's leaves everywhere. Like. The shoes are cleaner from being outside than my floor is. My floor is making my shoes cleaner, and I don't want to step on needles and broken glass indoors. But anyway, eyes. Now comes the part of rough assembly. I'm not building a rabbit with legs, because legs are superfluous. Rabbits are actually a kind of slug-like creature that sort of move quickly on a layer of slime. Uh, really quickly, like, you're, you think you can outrun them? You cannot outrun them. They'll slide right after you, and because there's not footsteps, it's totally silent. You'd just be like, what is that sound? <laughs> Rabbit to the back of the head. You're done. So, with this connection, oh, that's not good. Hmm, I've made the rabbit too symmetrical. Uh, there's got to be a way to get around this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> For a second, I thought I had royally ruined my own day by making the rabbit identical on two sides, but the rabbit is meant to be symmetrical. Notice... Nope. I did royally ruin my day. Because this end needs to go outward, but it doesn't do that because the heads are not on the right sides. Uh, huh. That's not good at all. You guys saw this coming. You knew, and you didn't warn me. Well, the solution is not that complicated, because I'm a schmuck. So, when I design things inherently, I always put in a backup plan in case of schmuckery. It's a very simple aspect to my being. The answer is that because, you know, to describe to you what the problem is, it's that the rabbit cannot be placed with the eyes inward without one side being upside down, because it, it inverts. Short answer is, since I made the rabbit so bulbous, it doesn't actually matter um, what side is what, does it? I mean, the butt is the same as the head, right? So all I need to do is cut off the head, put the head on the butt, and it will work. Additionally, this allows me to fix this issue of this head is not fully aligned. I mean, that is a tough thing to split, so literally what I'm going to do is just cut the fabric. I mean, 
This doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be rabbit-like. Kind of the interesting thing about the fact that we're going to turn this inside out is that it doesn't, like I'm not making a dress here. I'm not rarity. Hey, decapitation. Oh, it's always a good day when you get to decapitate something. It, just kidding, it's never a good day when you have to decapitate something. It's always unpleasant. So the head will need to fit with the other head. Well, okay. It took a bit of work, but I figured it out. Now I have two symmetrical rabbit halves, which apply so that the outside is in. And they match reasonably well, sort of, kind of. I mean, the forehead on that one's weird, but it, 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 it doesn't matter. It just needs to be relatively rabbit-shaped to appease the sacrifice. Now, um, you've got your ears. The ears will connect between the halves, so uh, right at the top of the head joint. That is an instance where you definitely need to pin those. Uh, I know I was just talking about pinning ears. I think it's called cropping ears in most places, but it's the same concept. So get some pins. Really do need a pin cushion. That's what this rabbit will probably turn into. Kidding. It, it's for a rabbit substitute. I can make stew out of it. It's not a real rabbit. Uh, that's a lot of canvas to be going through. I think the machine can probably handle it. Do I have a height adjust? I don't think so. Uh, but anyway, that's where I will start, just because I need to get through that first. So, uh, I can pin the rest just to be kind of sure that it's where it's supposed to be. Now, they do stick out the bottom like fangs, which rabbits do ha definitely have. I'll fold them back once they're in position so that I can get around the head. Oh, this is going to be tough. But hey, there's no point in doing it if it's boring. That's the problem I find with modern society, is that it is unbelievably boring. I have my own theories on that, but right now I need to sew a rabbit. Alright, here's the hard part. It's getting the machine to go through the ears. I'm going to have to take the foot up and pull through manually. So that's actually something that I am going to double stitch through just to make sure the ears are completely held on because the, uh, the density of stitching will be lower because it's manual. Oops. Almost got myself. So yeah, actually I think it'll end up being triple stitched because I, I still have to go back through to get to the other side of the head. Again, foot up. Uh, the foot is the thing that holds your fabric down. And foot down. Uh, when the foot is down, it allows the sewing machine to pull fabric. There's a claw type, like gears that pull it. Kind of tough to do turns for me. I don't know, you're probably an expert in sewing, so why are you caring? But I'm not great at this. I can do it. I can do it without getting it through my finger. 90 degree pivot. Let me get those out of the way. Okay, like I said, folding the ears back, you want those to be inside the rabbit. Because those will be on the outside of the rabbit when it's turned inside out, which that's the goal here, is that the rabbit is sewed with everything you don't want seen on the inside and everything you do want seen, everything you do want seen is on the in inside so that it'll be on the outside when you turn it inside out. I'm gonna go straight across and then finish that. What? What did you do? What the heck is going on? It only sewed to there. Um, hold on, I'm going wrong. Check the bob out. Ah, there's the problem. Notice it stopped sewing halfway through. Bobbin ran out. So now you get to see me reload a bobbin, which is the most boring thing you could possibly ask to see. 
Maybe I'll skip through it, maybe I won't. So how you reload a bobbin. Uh, the bobbin is loaded from the spool, which you put the spool back here. The bobbin gets attached here. There's a switch somewhere up. Ah. You switch the bobbin back and follow the instructions written on the top of this particular machine. So this hits, uh, there is a pulley here. Uh, every bobbin has a small hole in it. So what you want to do is go up through the hole and out. Connect, connect. Hold that up. I believe it qualifies as a case of, eh, close enough. So, uh, it's fine, it's fine. Well, uh, it's not as full as it could be, but eh, it should work. If I did professional grade work, I'd be making money in my life instead of just spending it. Right, just pull that out. Reattach this. Sirens outside, I think. That's pretty normal. Uh, I wanted to go this way. Connect. Connect. Through the internal hook. That sews the bottom part of the rabbit. Now we'll sew the top part. Uh, you're gonna wanna leave the butt open. Uh, why the butt? That's just where it happens to be. That is where you will pull the inside to the outside. Uh, don't sew it completely or you'll have a perpetually inside-out rabbit. Which sounds like a horror movie to me. Like, the, you know, a bunch of teenagers go to a, I don't know, a mountain park and they're pursued by the perpetually inside-out rabbit. That'd be terrifying. And... So you're gonna want to leave a pretty sizable butt opening because the rabbit has to fit through there. So, that's the butt opening. I'm gonna grab it by the ears, and I'm gonna pull. It's giving birth to itself. It's a rabbit. Hello, I'm a rabbit. Oh, look at me. Oh, I'm gonna eat you. I'm gonna devour your very soul. Oh, I'm gonna eat you till you're dead. Ah. <laughs> ah, I see you out there on the internet. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Mr. Rabbit, what are you talking about? Oh, you're very bad at ventriloquism. But yeah, I made a rabbit. Yeah. Right now my hand is up its butt, oh, which is kind of gross, but doesn't he look sad when I do that? Like, oh, there's a hand in my uh, butt, and I'm unstuffed. Why are you doing this? Why are you making me talk? Why are you talking to yourself? You're a stuffed rabbit, and you're terrified of us. Well, that's the idea. Uh, threads in the ears are a little bad, so I'm actually going to go back and adjust the ears a little bit. No, oh, no, don't turn me inside out again. Uh. Okay, the rabbit is now better sewn, so the ears are a little bit better. They still look weird, but that's because the rabbit is currently very, um, flaccid. And he needs stuffing. So that's why we left the butt open. So you're going to want to take the stuffing, and unlike the ears, which are designed to be a little bit softer, the rabbit must be very, very firm. So he needs a lot of stuffing. A lot of butt stuffing. Plus, I've got way too much of this foamy stuff, and I really need to get rid of it, so I'm going to try to fit it all into this one rabbit. Uh, it's ugh. probably self-explanatory, but you want to stuff the head first and then move backward through the rest of it. It's, oh, it's already looking weird. All right, I never made a rabbit before, so this is new to me. Just gotta get that, ugh, just too much of it. Get, get in there, get in there. Why is this butt so tight? Hmm. 
I thought about compressing, you know, just pouring sand in here to make a realistic weight rabbit. They're actually very heavy. Huh, neat. Stuffing stick. Did not know that came with the uh, the foam. Had this foam for like six years, never knew it had three stuffing sticks in it. Doesn't even stay on the outside. Unless they didn't come with it, and I just ended up putting them there because they have the word stuffing on them, which, knowing me, is not out of the realm of possibility. I have this uh, issue where anytime I organize something, I always put stuff in really weird places that I can't find again. That's why I like having everything out in the open so that I can see literally everything I own. Oh, wait. <coughs> oh, this stuff's a little bit allergenic. Okay. Yeah, that's not ideal. But I mean, it's a rabbit. It's got a very long <laughs> neck. That's hilarious looking. Um, oh well. It's relatively squishy. Let me add a little bit more into the butt. Gonna double his stuffing that. Hold him between the legs and just uh. Alright, that's a swollen rabbit. Okay, so as you can see, he's got ears, he's got button eyes, he's made of flammable material, and he's full of stuffing through the butt. Uh, now, it's just a matter of, probably shouldn't have stuffed the ears. That would have worked a little better, I think, because then they'd be really floppy, because they're floppy anyway. Or I can put a metal clip around them. Uh, I have to sew the butt closed, which is uh, a pretty big hole, so it's going to take a while. That mostly, um, well, actually, yeah, that's hand sewing, so that's going to take me a bit. So we're just going to cut you right to that, because that's just me running a needle through the rabbit's butt. Okay, I sewed the butt. Not a very good butt, but it doesn't need to be that great. And there you have it. Let me flip that off. So you can see me better. Or so you can see this guy better. That's a rabbit, I think. I mean, this will act as a decoy to help defend me from them, because if I send this out, they'll know that, you know, oh, there's a rabbit here. We probably shouldn't eat the person in here. Uh, that looks like a rabbit enough. Uh, it should be usable for any sort of rabbit simacrula you need. Um, yeah, so I can use this for my rabbit experiments now. It's the same as a regular rabbit in terms of size and expression. That sort of blank, dead, cold, evil stare. Rabbit. And I just spent like an hour and a half creating a rabbit. So hopefully you enjoyed that. You can go build your own rabbits. Um, Hopefully I have something less flammable. Um, what else do I say at the end of these videos? I don't know. Um, extra?